We did about 37 loops round and round Triple M, Pilot Place Road, the Power Lines Road, trying to find the elephants. And finally, while we did all those loops, they managed to pop out. Still no word on the wild dogs just yet, but that's okay. Maybe they've said, you have all have had enough. We need to go and be seen somewhere else. So that was nice. I just dropped everything. How cool is that? I love backlit elephants. It's one of my favorite things in the golden grass, especially at this time of the year. It, very, it really is one of the most prettiest things you can see. There's lots of elephants around you. And that tiny little baby is being quite sweet as well. It's fairly young. It, it might just be just under a year old now. It can use its trunk quite well. It was doing something quite funny a moment ago. It was just kicking the ground. I don't know if it was trying to maybe uproot a bulb or, or a root, in fact, or something along those lines. But it was clearly struggling. And uh, it was quite entertaining to watch. Maybe it's going to do it again. You can see lots of little midges and bugs flying around, though. It's going to be a hot day, I suspect. And yeah, the go-away birds are also starting to chirp now. I wonder what they're moaning about. What's well, got their feathers ruffled? I can't imagine it would be the elephants. Who could possibly be cross at these gentle giants? If anything, you, it's nice to have them around. They're always on the herbivore side. But she's searching that big cow. She's a lovely cow too. She's very relaxed. She's looking for the tastiest things to eat. Now, the reason why we're not seeing the elephants hanging around the fire breaks, we, we've seen all that nice green grass popping through, is because it's a bit too sort of short for an elephant to pull out of the ground. But if the wildebeest and the zebra don't eat it, or the warthogs in particular, because they, they're there now, then in the next few days you might find the elephants hanging around those areas trying to pick up some of those nice green shoots. Oh, that little elephant is so sweet. Ah, apparently Byron's elephants were feeding along the fire break. Now, obviously those trunks are incredibly nimble and they're able to use them just like you and I use our hands. Run, run, run. Don't get too far away from mum. A bit worried there to get left behind, making sure it stays at mum's side. But like I was saying, the grass is too short that's coming up now for the ellies to feed on, so they're probably feeding on the bark of trees and whatever's left over of the leaves. Who doesn't love a crispy leaf fresh out of the fire? I'm trying to think, this herd, there must be at least 50 elephants here because I've seen a whole lot crossing over already and they just keep filtering out of the bushes. Lots of bulls. I reckon, maybe it's not one herd of elephants. Perhaps it's a, a couple of family groups together. I even saw a bachelor herd at one point too. I got very excited because I saw an enormous elephant and I thought, oh, Daryl. It wasn't Daryl though. I think Daryl's still down at Earth Lodge in the southern sands. So he lives. I can't wait for him to make his return again. I miss him so much. My favorite elephant in the entire world. He doesn't seem to like everyone though, but he's only ever given me the greatest sightings. But here come a couple more. So I'm just feeding right past this. There's a group of youngsters that are also going to come through from the back. Taking a food with it. It's so stunning. The colors at the moment are really, really pretty. Just crossing Triple M now, going into Arethusa, where I'm sure they'll head towards Red Dam. That's the direction that they seem to be going in. Perhaps they'll have a drink there a little bit later. Now, an interesting question from Colleen. You're wondering if elephants are the most unpredictable animals. Let's reposition. Let's go up a little bit further. And no, not at all. I actually think, if anything, elephants are quite frank with you. And their body language, barring a couple of sort of subtle signs, pretty obvious to read once you're able to read animal behavior. Remember, you can only learn so much from a book. You actually have to sit with these animals and watch them and have them flap their ears at you. Have a mock charge so you know exactly what to expect. There's a whole group coming through now and I reckon in the next two to three minutes they'll be quite close to the car you can just see them through the silver classy you know what buffalo to me are some of the most unpredictable animals and so are hippo not not hippos in the water because they feel quite comfortable in the water and they can also show you quite a few agitation signs by splashing about even just snorting uh, a grunting and you know all these different signs that we see we're very lucky we've seen quite a quite a bit of hippo behavior sort of a 
agitation behavior, not necessarily with us, but also with the other hippos in the dam. And then when they come out on land, though, mm, they don't tolerate anything. Remember, they feel very uncomfortable. So hippo and buffalo, I would say, Colleen, are the two most unpredictable animals. And if you ask any guides, they're the ones that we watch out for the most. The cats, I'm really not as concerned about as I am, say, with an elephant. But then again, an elephant is very responsive to human on foot. Just by shouting, clapping your hands, making yourself seem uh, big and scary is enough to turn a five and a half ton elephant bull. But tr you try to do that to a lone buffalo bull and he's, you're just going to agitate him any mo even more and, he, and they'll charge you. So you've just got to be careful. Breeding herds of buffalo are actually quite nice to view. Because you imagine if there's 200 of them and one in you, uh, of you, they don't really care. They just sort of stare and look at you and they, f they form a wall. And as long as you don't go too close and try and cause a scene, you'll be all right. But you can sit up on a termite mound and actually watch a breeding herd move through. It's just once you catch a, a dugger boy on his own. When you've lived a life with a family and then all of a sudden you're too old or you're injured, you can't keep up with the herds, that becomes a bit of a problem. Isn't that so lovely? But elephants are fantastic animals. But we'll sit here with them for as long as they stay on Juma. And I'm going to send you back across to my dear friend Jamie, who's moved on from lions and is now watching wildebeest approach a river.